Aloha and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today is a phenomenal keyboardist, songwriter, and producer who was born right here in Honolulu, Hawaii. At the age of eight, he began his classical piano studies and he continued this for six and a half years. In 1981, he decided to move to Los Angeles to check out the music scene. And what a great move that turned out to be. He has worked with many of the big names in the music industry here in the US and the world. Some people he has worked with are Cheryl Lynn, Al Jarreau, Frankie Beverly and Mays, Peter White, Michael Paolo, Kalapana, Don Ho, and the list goes on. For the past 31 years, he has been one of the principal members of the two-time Grammy-nominated Los Angeles-based group, Hiroshima. I am so happy to have him here today. Let's welcome Mr. James Kimo Cornwell to the show. Aloha, James, how are you? Aloha, Gwen. Now, Thanks do you want me having... to call you James or do you want me to call you Kimo? Oh, Kimo, please. Kimo, yeah. okay, well, I'm gonna call you Kimo. Everybody knows me as Kimo. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Kimo, um, for being here. I am just a big fan of you and Hiroshima. So I am just so thankful, you know, that you are here today. Thank you, thank you. Now I saw you, um, I saw the group about a couple weeks ago, about a month ago um, in Hampton Jazz Legacy. And you guys uh -huh. just just played your hearts out as, <laughs> as yeah, always, as always. What started you or who, how did you get started um, in the music industry? Well, like you mentioned, I was I took class, classical lessons from the age of eight and uh, all through high school and middle school. You know, I played in a drum section in the uh, orchestra. I had some drum background, drumming background. And um, so uh, I graduated from Farrington High School. Mm -hmm. I'm from Kali, uh -huh. you know, in Honolulu. And, uh, you know, then I, I got together with a band, you know, just a garage band, you know, and it started getting into the Waikiki scene. And then, you know, worked my way up from there, played with a lot of shows in town. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another. And then I uh, got a chance to play with Kalapana. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 78, we went to Japan. And a lot of the friends, a lot of the guys in Kalapana were guys I grew up with, you know, Milani and uh, Mackie, DJ, you know. So anyway, um, that, uh, that went on for uh, about a year and a half. And then I uh, came back to Hawaii. We were based in California. Mm -hmm. Dan Calapano was based in California at that time. So uh, after I left, came back to Hawaii and uh, played around a little more. And uh, Michael Paulo, who was also in Calapana, mm -hmm. uh, he left after a while. And we put a group together. And uh, we, we said, well, if for some reason <laughs> that band you know, doesn't work out, Let's move to the mainland, you know, let's move to LA. Wow. So basically that's what happened. I got married with my wife Debbie, and uh Michael was our best man, my best <laughs> man. And okay. uh yeah, so we moved up together and started my journey from then. Wow. Now, you know, yeah. So it's been a it's been a blessed journey, and I'm been so fortunate to play with so many of the artists you mentioned and and, and more, you know. I mean that was just a snippet of the list. I saw your resume that you sent to me uh -huh. <laughs> and your bio. I mean, yeah, that was just a snippet. And we haven't even touched on um, you doing scores for music, you know, for uh, shows and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But you have played so many genres of music. What is your favorite genre of music to play? Well, um, you know, my taste, in music are very eclectic, you know, I love it all. I mean, classical, mm -hmm. rock, um, jazz, blues, R&B, of course, um, country, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a child of the 60s. You know, I grew up listening to a lot of the 60s and 70s bands, you know, so that's a lot of influence on me. But if I had to just pick one, one category, I guess it would be R&B jazz, ah. you know, and, um, you know, a lot of, well, yeah, jazz artists like Herbie Hancock, uh -huh. push the envelope to melt together R&B and jazz and, and stuff with their music really influenced me a lot. 
Now, with the COVID pandemic, you know, that pretty much put everything to a stop, the entertainment realm to the stop. What mm -hmm. did you do during that time, during, during COVID? What did you do to keep your mind sane? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, that's a good question. Um, fortunately, I have a little home studio, as you can see in the background. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, I was practicing. I went back to some of my classical studies that I had left for a while and just to brush up. Um, I was doing, um, I was still recording at home, like, you know, with technology you can do that nowadays. Mm -hmm. So people would send me tracks, I record at home and then send them the audio files for them to uh, download and, you know, hook up with their music. And uh, yeah, we had a good, uh, I'd say it was a good year almost, not playing live at all. I, actually, I take that back. I did do a couple of streaming uh, gigs with Michael Paula, uh, Michael Paula's uh, gigs. Uh -huh. So he had a he had uh, two streaming things that we did, mm -hmm. and uh, one was outside, and one was in a club that was uh, bare with no people, um, and they sh they had a streaming uh, device there, mm -hmm. and um, that was in uh, Seal Beach, a place called popular place. Okay. Yeah, a club called uh, Spaghettinis. Yeah, Spaghettinis. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you should have Jesse check that out too when he's in, yeah. you know, in California in time. I will. Now, speaking of Jesse, he wanted me to ask you a question, okay? Uh -huh. uh -oh. and, <laughs> and the question is um, out of all the projects you have been a part of, which project is your favorite? Well, I mean, I have to say, I mean, it's Hiroshima. I mean, it's the longest. And most satisfying one I've been in, I guess, because I've had so much input mm -hmm. with the band, thanks to Dan and June. You know, right. Um, they've been so nice to me and um, given me a lot of opportunity to, you know, write, co produce with them uh -huh. and arrange, you know. So that's been, a, that's been a great learning experience, you know, to work with these guys. Now, tell us about, uh, well, before I ask you this one question, I'm going to ask you this. You have played, um, well, we talked about Kalapana, but you have played with many of the top local Hawaiian artists, and you were a member of the band Kalapana. So how was it playing with all of those artists? Just how was it? What was your experience like? I know you touched on a little bit, but what, what was your experience like playing with them? Well, you know, like playing with Kalapana was just like playing with family, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when they asked me to uh, join them, it was their first trip to Japan. So that was in uh, 78. We it was toward the end of 1977. We did a lot of rehearsing, uh -huh. uh, you know, before that, because it was that was going to be recorded uh, when we went to Japan. So they recorded a live album. In fact, I, I just happened to have it here. <laughs> I just. Oh, wow. To, so wow. This is the album that never was released in. Um, I have it right. Yeah, I had it right. Uh -huh. Uh, this was this was released uh, only in Japan, mm -hmm. but it's the whole band, uh, adding me and um, but except uh, unfortunately Mackie wasn't in wasn't there, mm -hmm. so uh, we went over in '78 to record that album and uh, we recorded some tracks in Guam too live, mm -hmm. so um, that was an amazing experience. I mean the band was so popular. Um, and still is to this day. But, uh, yeah. you know, we played uh, the Sun, Sun Plaza, I think, and we played, played Tokyo and Osaka. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was funny because um, the first half of the concert was more of an acoustic kind of thing, you know, Kalapana, a lot of vocals. Mm -hmm. And then the second half, we had some more, uh, the music was more uplifting and, and rocking, you know, and the people went nuts. They, would, they were charging the stage. Wow. <laughs> and they had to have security hold them back. You know, they were coming over into the orchestra pit and uh, it was wild. At first it was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Then it was like, I don't know if that's cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so uh, yeah, but we, uh, yeah, so that was Kalapana and um, came back to the mainland, LA. And we, uh, you know, we did a lot of driving, a lot of driving around uh, uh -huh. the United States. I mean, we drove up to Seattle a lot, you know, it was roughing it, you know, a lot here at that time. So, wow. 
And then uh, a lot of the other acts in Hawaii, um, I got to record with uh, Israel, Brother Brother. Yes. Uh, my 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 good friend Gaylord Holo Ola Malia, um, called me and asked me if I wanted to do some uh, playing on it. So I was yeah, man. I said yeah. I'm so excited to play on his album. So you know, wow. yeah. I, I know a lot of. I just I keep in touch with a lot of my friends, musician oh, okay. friends in Hawaii. Okay. Well, I know I I know for sure because our 30 minutes is going to go so quick. I already know I'm going to have to do a part two with you because you just are like, you are just like, it's so much full of history. And I have like so many questions to ask you. Anytime, but, anytime. But tell us about the CD that you produced in 1996 oh. titled I'm Going Home, which had several Nahuku nominations. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, that was, uh, okay. Randy Lorenzo, an amazing songwriter, singer, artist, uh, ukulele player, guitar player. Uh, he was in, he was a part of Gabby Painui's band in the early 70s. And that was a renaissance period for Hawaii with Hawaiian music. Mm -hmm. So they were uh, produced by Ry Cooter, who was very big on the mainland, produced a lot of uh, acts in the folk and country and rock genre. So anyway, uh, Randy was up here, living up here at the time. And a friend of mine hooked us and, and his hooked us both up. So, you know, I, I, Randy and I got together and we, you know, we just, uh, I just listened to what he had, his ideas. And I said, man, these are great songs. You know, we should uh, put them together and present them to his old record company, which was Panini Records, owned by uh, Stig Fr Siegfried. And he, uh, Steve, Steve lives in Maui, in Hana. So um, we did that, and Steve liked the idea. So we uh, recorded most of the tracks up here, but, and we did some recording back in Hawaii. And um, so that year, um, yeah, uh, he got nominated for those, um, a couple of Hoku Awards. And uh, unfortunately, that was the year that Brother Is uh, passed away. And um, he got nominated and he won, and deserving, deservedly so. And, uh, and John Cruz also was in the same, same category. So there was a lot of uh, great acts in there with um, Randy, but just to be nominated was just, uh, was just great. It was an honor. Yes. Now in 2018, you released your only CD titled Hawaii State of Mind. Yeah, finally. <laughs> what? <laughs> What was the motivation behind that one? Well, I have to give uh, credit to my wife, Debbie, who kept pushing me and said, you know, about time you should do your own CD, you know? And I said, well, uh, maybe you're right. So I, I started out a little bit, you know, playing, maybe I'll just do a piano-y CD. And then one thing led to another. I kept adding this and that. And I said, man, this is, I got to, you gotta add a bass, I gotta add a drummer, you know. So uh, it snowballed into this, what it is now. And uh, it took about three years because I was, you know, funding the whole project myself. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of Hawaii State of Mind. So I wanted a lot of guys, great musician friends of mine from Hawaii to play on it. There's mm -hmm. so much talent in Hawaii, you know, that people don't hear and, yes. and see. So uh, that was my chance to get back and, and get those guys out there, hopefully, and um, you know some people to check them out. But mm -hmm. I'm really so happy with with their uh, contributions and uh, their talents and everything. And then I got a couple of guys from up here to in LA to uh, add to that percussionist uh, Richie Garcia and another drummer who's also in uh, part of Hiroshima now, Land Richards. Oh, okay. Land played on one song. But you, you heard him at the at the uh, concert. Yes. So, yeah. um, so anyway, uh, yeah. So I'm very happy with the CD, and uh, you know it's out there. We sell it at our concerts, so it's been getting out there, and people have been uh, buying it and you know checking it out. So. Well, you know, I haven't heard it yet, but I am going to check it out, and I'm actually going to play it on my radio show. I'm gonna pick a song well, and play. You it gotta on my get. Radio. I gotta get your address, and I'll send you a copy. Oh, a, hard, okay. a physical copy. Okay. No. Well, thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Um, 
You have written scores and played music for several TV movies, cooking shows, and documentaries. What is your favorite score you have written? Well, there was one called Mothers and Daughters. It was a documentary. Uh-huh. And uh, June and I worked on it, actually. Mm-hmm. And um, But I did most of the music. And um, so it was, it was uh, yeah, it was a documentary that, documentary that was, uh, didn't have a lot of showings, but it was shown basic, basically in LA. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun for that one. Wow. You were just, you were just so, it's just, I'm just so happy to be speaking with you right now. You just <laughs> well, don't know. <laughs> same here. I'm glad to meet you. <laughs> glad to meet you too. So for the past 31 years, you know, oh my goodness, it's bad. For the past 31 years, you have been a principal member of the band Hiroshima, um, which is a group that I absolutely um, love. You have Mm. recorded over 17 albums with the group. What is going on with the band now? And do you think you'll ever come back um, with the band to Hawaii? Well, uh, we have our new CD uh, called 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there it is. so we're, we started promoting that this past September. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, there's two songs on there that Dan wrote. I got a lot of airplay on Sirius, Sirius um, uh, you know, air uh-huh. radio. And um, so, yeah, we're, we're still around. You know, we're, we're uh, still recording and writing. And, but we're looking at this next year to kind of, are we calling it a Domo tour, like a thank okay. you tour? Okay. So we're kind of winding down a little. Okay. Um, so it might be our last year for a while. It's not like we're not going to play with each other ever, but it's we're just scaling back a little. Um, yeah. We've been doing this for a while. <laughs> when, yeah. <laughs> so, but do you think you'll ever come back to Hawaii? Better yet. Okay. I think, well, I think I have somebody that can answer that question. Um, can we bring that person in for me, please? Oh, <laughs> who is that guy? What? Okay, I'll think about hey. bringing back to Hawaii. Ah. <laughs> You're in Hawaii now, aren't you? Yes, I am. It's my brother. Hey, good thing you said nice things about me at the beginning of the show. <laughs> hey. Well, hey, what else am I going to say? <laughs> hey, I love you, man. I love my brother, Kimo. I know. <laughs> See, that was brother. my technical difficulty right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, better late than never. Hey, surprise. Yeah, uh, good surprise. Oh, uh, man, right. good to see you. Yeah. What well, was well, it? On that note, yes, I'm, I've, I've been trying to work on getting Hiroshima back to Hawaii. In fact, I had them scheduled and yeah. the COVID canceled things. So, you know, we, we're talking about, you know, I'm talking about the manager John and doing a big, big thing uh, 2022. Yeah. So, yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, the man. two of you Can't guys, wait. the two hey, of you yeah. guys, you brothers, you brothers. Oh, yeah. What was it like working together? That's stuff we can't talk about on the air now. (laughs) (laughs) You knew that was going to be my question, right? (laughs) (laughs) No, you know, Kimo's just one of those homemade friends. And, uh, you know, ever since we we actually started playing in Kalapana together. That's that's how we met and and started hanging out. And, of course, we immediately bonded. And, um, you know, of course, Kimo was already a, a keyboard legend locally, right? And I was just cutting my teeth. So um, I already knew about Kimo and his group Beowulf and, and Alvin Fitzgerald was in that band. So he was right about the friendships and all the, the people that we knew. We, all, we were just playing and we all ended up in California. In fact, at one point, John Raposa was in the band, Kimo's bandmate. Um, and, uh, you know, Creed is a percussionist, you know, played some gigs with us. So, um, yeah, it was just like both, just a family. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, so. A lot of good times, man. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and we survived. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I was telling Gwen about all the driving we did on the mainland. Because I remember the I, first oh, thing uh, you guys, the very first thing you guys told me when we went to Japan that first time, said, enjoy it now, because when you go back to LA. <laughs> that's right. That was so much. That was funny. But then we well, had, it's all good. Picture this, picture this. We're in the youth hostel in, yeah. what was it? <laughs> in Boston. Or somewhere. It was Boston. Was, Boston. Was, celebra- oh, Boston is celebrating Kimo's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> was it my birthday? Oh no, no. It was oh, that birthday. was Montana. We're, that was Montana. We're in the hospital. We're in the hospital and it's like, Kimo, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> no. Welcome yeah. to the, the the big rock tour. <laughs> yeah. 
That, wow. that was in Montana. And uh, yeah, we were in the hospital, man. Yeah. And, and it, was, it was cold, man. Whew. It was cold. And then, yeah, everybody talked about the glory days. And yeah, we, we paid our dues. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. yeah. We've been and, there, done that. But it was well, a fun experience. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have to do a part two with both of you guys. <laughs> but what? Because, you know, the 30 minutes again is just so. Is it, it's is it gone already? It, it, yeah. Almost, almost. Oh, I have man. a few more questions that I'm going to ask you. And now that uh, Michael is on, I'm going to get his opinion as, as well. But with all for new artists that are coming into the industry, because you know, it's a little bit hard right about now, right? Mm. What advice would each one of you give to a new artist that's coming into the industry right now? Akima, right, you can go first. Oh, well, it's, yeah, it's a, uh, I don't know how artists do it, man. I mean, you know, when we were growing up, we had a lot of places to play and craft our, uh, you know, our, or our artistry, I guess. And, um, you know, we came up to LA and there was a lot of tours happening. Now there's, there's not as much because of COVID and, and costs and everything. But um, I would just tell the artists to keep, keep, uh, keep the faith, you know, and, 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 and play with, uh, do what they love. And the passion will, will carry them through, I think, you know. And um, there's so many other ways you can, uh, Get, you know, you have to be in social media and all this other, other thing to, uh, you know, get ahead, you know. So there's a lot of, uh, of schooling and learning you have to do on your own, actually, because where the record companies used to do it for you, now you have to do it on your own. So I would say to do a lot of homework on that and keep practicing and, and honing your craft. Michael, well, what do you have to say? I have a very simple... <laughs> words of advice and it's how i started and why i started playing music because i loved it and that's it exactly. I, I, I loved playing it was in my heart it was a passion and i never thought about fame fortune making money any of those things it was just pure love and throughout my career that is what carried me through good and bad yeah and when you love somebody something really with a passion you find a way to make it work yeah Wow. So, um, Kimo, yes. what things should we be marking on our calendar for you? And then, Michael, I'm going to ask you the same thing since you're on, too. <laughs> what should we be marking on the calendar? Well, I hope it's uh, one that Michael can tell you about us coming to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we know we're waiting for that one. And, um, well, our next Hiroshima gig is in uh, Las Vegas at the Smith's uh, Performing Center, I believe. And that's January, oh, I can't think of it now, January 22nd or something. And then uh, a week or so later is Napa, uh, Blue Note, Napa, New, uh, California, Blue Note. Mm -hmm. And it goes on from there. So that's in the beginning of February. And where can people go to find information about oh. you and Hiroshima? Yeah, they can go. Uh, we have a website, uh, HiroshimaMusic.com. Mm -hmm. And also we're on Facebook, Hawaiian, uh, Hiroshima Band, I think. If you, you know, you search Hiroshima Band, I think our uh, page should come up and it, it has a 2020 logo. Okay. 2020 uh, album cover logo. Okay. Michael? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm uh, actually starting up my shows in Hawaii again. January 15th, I got a concert yes. with the, the legendary Martin Navarra. Um, and uh, it's yeah. a great singer. And uh, we're doing a, our first concert together as, as a, uh, you know, co-headliner. Uh, and and uh, so I'm looking forward to that. That's January 15th at the Alamon Hotel. And then I got a, a still planned uh, Smooth Jazz All-Stars on February 12th at the Alamon Hotel. And then uh, I got a concert series at, at the, the Westin in Palm Springs. Got four shows coming up there. And then I got a, a series at La Costa Resort I'm working on. And then I got Six shows I'm going to be doing at South Coast Winery in Temecula as well. Yeah, as Mike, Mike, Mike's right. the Energizer Bunny, okay? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, this guy, you got to support, you got to think, people got to support him, man. He, he's like a promoter, uh, amazing sax player, uh, songwriter, and everything, man. You know, he's got the and whole package. Because, and it's because of Michael that I do what I do here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah, it is. I, I'm planning a big jazz festival in Hawaii, and uh, hopefully that's where I'll be. Hiroshima come and play. So that's in the works right now. Yeah, man. Okay. 
Okay. All right. <laughs> All so, right. There it is. Go to michaelpollard.com or apollardproductions.com. There you go. There you yep. go. So, yep. would you guys be willing to come back for a part two after the holidays? Absolutely. It's just sure. so much. So I have to yeah. talk to you about. Yeah. Text me or email me or whatever. <laughs> okay. I will. Well, I thank both of you, and I hope this was a good surprise for you, Kimo. Oh, hey, yeah. Kimo. I, did, I never would have thought. I, I saw where you were in Hawaii. And, yeah. Uh, that's so funny. <laughs> Gwen, Gwen, please say hi to Jesse for me when you see him. I will. I yeah. will, most definitely. But I thank you both for being on the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I'm definitely, we're definitely going to schedule that part two. Um, Michael, I will see you um, at the concert here. Absolutely. January. And of course, I'm going to have to figure out a way to come see her Hiroshima. Oh. I might have to come to Vegas or something. I don't know. Well, you might. Hopefully, you'll see us in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. hopefully. Hopefully. No, I, can, I, can, I can guarantee that. Okay, you heard that, yeah. right? <laughs> right? Anybody's going to do it, Mike's going to do it. Yes, right. yes, he will. Well, I thank you both for being here. And to my audience, thank you so much for being here. Happy holidays. And until next time after the new year. Aloha and God bless. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.